Having finished her speech and being once again ignored by the guests, Uni began making hand signals. Incredibly, we believed they were directed at us. The guests, if any of them noticed her, must have wondered what on earth she was doing, waving her hands in the air. Perhaps they thought it was some way of directing the footman, but her meaning was quite clear to us. She was commanding us to come out of our hiding place, to come down to the great hall. Is she out of her mind? I asked. This might be a good moment, wise child said. With Marut out of the way, at least for now. Do you have the black egg? I checked my pocket and nodded. Are we really going to go? I said. Of course. It will be a chance for the three Dorans to get together and concentrate their power. Wise Child was already standing on a chair, lifting the planks that secured us in our prison and easing herself upward through the hole. We must put the planks back and cover them with the carpet. We never know when we might want to use the hiding place again, said Wise Child, as if talking to herself. It felt strange and very dangerous to be in the passage outside Cormac's room, even though, with everyone pressed into service for the feast, it was completely deserted. We scurried down the stairs and along the passages, fearful of what lay in front of us, yet excited, too. At length we reached the entrance of the hall, passing various footmen coming and going, all too busy to pay us any attention. We sidled into the hall, wise child heading for the singer she hoped was Juniper, I making for Uni, who stood leaning against a wall, looking entirely relaxed. There you are, she said. You've taken your time. What happened next was that Uni and the Juniper lady, who still did not look much like Juniper, drew Wise Child and myself out of the hall and into a little room in the passage beyond it. Are you Juniper? I asked the Juniper lady rather timidly. I was beginning to feel very confused by people changing their identity. Yes, I am Coleman, she said firmly in her old, old voice. She grinned at me and her eyes sparkled. Wait till you see me when I am not disguised, and then you will know. And she took my hand in a way I found very reassuring. First of all, Uni said, you need to know that Marut is dead. You didn't, said Juniper, appalled, her voice trailing away. Certainly not. I am surprised at you, said Uni. Dorans, as you know perfectly well, are not in the business of killing. Juniper accepted the rebuke from her old teacher with a grin. So what now? she asked. Soon I must go back to the Grey Knight. What the three of us need to do now is concentrate our power so that good may come out of this evil situation and out of this horrible place. Coleman, we want your help, too. You are more of a Doran than you care to know. So what do we actually do? asked Wise Child. Now, I mean. Uni glared at her as if she was being exceptionally stupid, though I might easily have asked the same question. We become one, she said. The four of us enter the place where there is no haste, no fear, and no danger and in entering it together we become as one person. Our powers meld together, and the energy is released. It is a force that will overcome evil. Following Uni's lead, we stood in a circle, held hands, and closed our eyes. There was a pause, and Uni suddenly said, Now, just as if we were going to run a race or something. I almost burst out laughing, but then I felt quite irritated because I really had no idea what she was talking about. I did not want to spoil anything for the others, however, all of whom I loved, even Uni. 
I tried to sink into a quiet place inside myself. I was holding the hands of Wise Child and Juniper. And then, to my immense surprise, it was suddenly as if some force was circulating through us all, making its way through my body from Wise Child and on to Juniper and thence to Uni. I was wide awake, perhaps more so than usual, but it was a different sort of wakefulness, almost a different place. A place, as Uni had said, beyond haste or fear or danger. Then I knew that I was Uni and Wise Child and Juniper, and they were me, and that between us, if we dared it, was a great power for love and goodness. I heard myself murmuring a prayer for Castle Door, for Prince Branguin, even, to my surprise, for poor, wicked Marut, who had missed the whole point of life and died without finding it. I opened my eyes and smiled at the others. Do you think it will work? Wise Child asked curiously. It will suffice, said Uni. She had scarcely said these words before a sound like thunder echoed through the castle and was thrice repeated. It was not thunder. It was too regular for that. But it was a chilling sound to hear, and we gazed at one another, puzzled, trying to think what on earth it could be. 